Hello everybody, this is the first part of a series of videos in which I'd like to introduce the push for Bitwig script, so the Ableton push controller, which is now also supported in uh, Bitwig. And in this first part, we're going to start simple. And we want to look at the navigation options we find on the controller. So, as you might find in the left corner, there is a play button. Pretty simple, press play, playback starts, press again, playback stops. Simple as this. What might not be so obvious, if you do a double click, you return to the start of your song. Again, double click, going back to the first one. And there's also an option hidden here, so if you go to Preferences and go to the settings of the push, you have also the option to enable that you want to return to zero if you press the stop button. So if you enable this, press stop, then directly return to zero, if you prefer to have it that way. And there's another option hidden here, if you press the shift key, and press the play button, you can toggle uh, the, the loop function. Pressing it again will turn it off. Moving on to the next button, it's a record button. So if you press record, you have the overall record enabled. Press it again, it disables it. And if you press start, you will record. Scroll up so you see something. Here we are recording. Press it again to stop recording and keep playing, or press the play button to stop everything. And I can also show uh, the undo button over here, up here, so if I press undo, everything is gone again. Same again, combination with shift, you can redo the feature, and you have it back, so, and undo again. So what else do we need? We want to navigate, uh, not only pre uh, play and stop, we also want to move around in our project, and you can use uh, that button over here to move the play cursor. And again, if you press the shift button, you can do it very fine-grained. And also, if you touch it, you will get further information in the display. You see the play position also in the display, and you also get the tempo information. That's also the feature of the second button. You can change the tempo by one BPM. And again, if you press the shift button, you can do it very fine-grained. Okay, going on here, pretty straightforward, metronome enable, tic-tac-tac, metronome off again, here we go. Tap tempo, also straightforward, press it multiple times to get the tempo you prefer. What else do we have on the left hand side of the options? So these were now the navigation options, but there is uh, more stuff to it. Um, what you want to frequently do is create new clips. If you don't want to do this freehand, you can say you won't have a fixed length. So this is for MIDI clips currently. The default setting is to have one bar. You can increase it up to 32 bars or down to one beat. So let's say we want to have two bars. And then if you go on a track, so let's see where is an empty slot here. So the, the logic will find the next free clip. So pressing new here, this is an extra clip and we start recording. Undo that again. Duplicate uh, duplicates your your clip. So select the clip, press duplicate, and it is duplicated. Um, automation uh, enables automation, global automation uh, writing. And if you keep the shift button pressed, you can toggle uh, the local clip automation. 
Uh, quantize is not fully working currently. To have quantize work, you need to have your nodes in view and the focus needs to be there. Then quantize button is working. So that's currently a little drawback here. Also double is currently not working. This feature is also missing in the API. But the delete button is working in several areas where you would also uh, have the uh, possibility to press the delete button on your keyboard. In that cases, you can also use that button here. So this was basically the left hand side of the controller. And I think we leave it with that for the first part of the tutorial. And now go and create some music. Bye.